Hi, everybody, and happy. Hey, everyone, can you still say that, right? I think we can. I can think we can still say it. I think we can still say Happy New Year. You know why? Uh, because this is our first show for the 2024. Yeah, you know? yeah, it feels like a couple months ago. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and and I think you know, as long as we don't hit uh, February, then you can still say uh, Happy New Year without sounding, you know, too much. <laughs> yeah. And you know how I always forget about uh, holidays and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, so Desiree, start the show. Yes, um, for those who may not know who I am, my name is Desiree Zelinsky. I am the co-founder of the Independent Film Creative Hub. I'm also the founder of Meepa Film Society, which is a local filmmaking community here in Northeast Pennsylvania, as well as the organizer of the Mystery Box Film Challenge that's with the Northeast Pennsylvania Film Festival. Yes, and my name is Luz Cabrales, and I am also the co-founder of the Independent Film Creative Hub uh, and the founder of Scranton Films. And together with Desiree and myself, we're trying to bring film back to the Scranton area and just uh, getting a lot of filmmakers interested, uh, what well, should I say, a lot of creatives interested in filmmaking in anything really creative. Uh, so we want to make sure that you are connecting with us uh, through our social media. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you uh, subscribe to the Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram accounts that we have, as well as our website, uh, which is ourcreativehub.com, where you're able to uh, interact with members uh, and also uh, see what uh, we have going on as far as events, uh, which reminds me, I think we have a, a couple of things coming this Saturday, two days from now. Uh, yeah, so NEPA Film Society, we're having our indie filmmaker meetup again, which will be on Saturday, which is January 27th, so this Saturday. And it's at Commonwealth Coffee House in Scranton, and it starts at 11 a.m., so it's really just a casual event that we put on for um, filmmakers and film enthusiasts mm -hmm. to come hang out and network for, for everybody to just talk about their projects going on, if they need help or anything like that, and be like, we welcome everyone, so you don't have to be a filmmaker. You don't have to be an actor if you love movies and you just love watching movies you can come hang out with us it's it's a nice time exactly and the whole idea of film in the film industry is that anyone can be in film if yeah. you're a construction worker you can be in film if you are a welder you can be in film so pretty much anybody uh because the whole thing about film is that it is what i love to be honest uh, that's right is that you can have every profession <laughs> every profession in film and that's what makes us uh, very unique uh, and w that's why we want to make sure that if you think that you are creative and you want to explore that uh, but you're not necessarily a you know a videographer or someone who can draw uh, you can still be in film uh, so please uh, come to the film meetup. Uh, I, those are always great. Uh, Desiree puts out a really nice event. Uh, just make sure we always introduce ourselves. I have been able to collaborate with a lot of filmmakers through there. Uh, same with uh, Desiree. So yeah. it, it does work. It does work. So I don't know what you're doing this Saturday, but you should, you know, get up early. And then early. come. <laughs> yeah, actually, wait, eight, 11 a.m. is not too oh, early. Yeah, so it should be good. <laughs> yeah, you can have coffee. But uh, anyway, so as well, uh, the other thing that we have coming up uh, in April is going to be the Northeast Pennsylvania Film Festival, uh, which, uh, Desiree, I'm going to let you lead that one as well because you are a part of the committee there. So t tell us a little bit more about that. Just putting it on, on everyone's radar, the Northeast Pennsylvania Film Festival is happening on April 12th to the 14th of this year. It's hosted by the Waverly Community House in partnership with WVIA and it's an, it's really an event you don't want to miss because we bring in like independent films and things like that promoting cultural awareness and appreciation for film as an art form like locally here um and with the ever popular mystery box film challenge which we'll be having again we had 12 films submitted for this year and one international film for the first time which i'm very excited for <laughs> Very cool. And that's also a great way to uh, just uh, network. Network uh, is, is everything in film and you can network with a lot of uh, filmmakers and non filmmakers that may be interested in, in, in that uh, as well. Uh, we also have uh, we don't have, but there's the seventh annual Jim Thorpe. Our friends in Jim Thorpe. <laughs> 
Yes, to our friends in uh, Jim Thorpe, uh, this is a great uh, festival as well that happens. Uh, and it's actually, let me see if I could get this right. It's happening right after the Northeast Pennsylvania Film Festival. So now you don't have an excuse not to go. And I guess the weekend after. Yeah, last year, last year it was just the same weekend. But now you can go. So let's check it out. And uh, I think I know some filmmakers that have gotten their films there. So it will be nice to come out and support that as well. Uh, but now that, you know, Scranton Tax, we're back for the new year uh, and we're here. Uh, Desiree, I'm going to let you just uh, kind of like tell us a little bit more about the show that we have today. Uh, and then we're going to show the trailer of the filmmakers that are we're going to talk with. Uh, they're very, very, very creative. And I love the film that we're going to promote as well, because, ah, well, you're going to have to find out. You're going to have to stay in, in, you know, for the chat. Uh, so can you help me out with that? Uh, uh, just that And, you know, we don't have to go through the whole thing because we want the filmmakers to tell us, but uh, uh, I know that uh, we are also waiting for one more, but for now we're going to introduce the two of them that are here. Go right ahead. That's right. Yeah. So uh, like Luce and I had a very, uh, had the pleasure of screening this film called The Showdown in Yesteryear, which was very interesting. And I do have to say, I never really expected this film and it's very interesting with the, the location and things like that, but I'll definitely let our film filmmakers introduce themselves and where they're from, because they're not local to Scranton. But tonight we have Tim O'Hearn, who is the producer and actor in The Showdown for Yesteryear. We also have Greg Lamberson, who is the screenwriter and Jeff Grinnell, who is also the lead actor in the showdown for yesteryear. So we have them on with us tonight. Yes, so before we do that, before we bring him into the live stream, we're gonna show uh, their trailer for uh, showdown in yesteryear. Uh, okay, enjoy. Oh. Stranger, what can I get for you? I'd like to have a captain and a coke. A what? That's good, brother. <laughs> you guys do go all out here. Thank you. <laughs> Just saw a man get killed. This is real. Wait till you hear this, Sheriff. Go on and tell him. I woke up this morning in the year 2022. I found a door. I fell through it. It brought me here. So I've been running around looking for it so I can find my way back home. You will regret it. Welcome to Dogwood Pass. It's a hard life, Mr. Wayne. My husband was the only man who stood up to him. The beast shot him in cold blood. What you doing with that flyer? I can be your deputy. You know how to shoot them sidearms you were? Hell no. You damn well better learn. It's Future Boy! Take a duck. Hey, I'm whiskey in the future. Does it glow in the dark? It's your last chance to go back. When I said I'd do it, I meant it. How do you think this ends, Dobbs? I found something. Call it a place. Call it a time. Uh, Jeff, those are some some skills with that uh, shotgun. Uh, thank you so much, Tim and Jeff, uh, for coming to our first yeah. show of 2024. We're very, very excited that you're here. Uh, we had a little conversation before and got to know a little bit more of you as creators. Uh, so Desiree and I are very, very happy and thankful that you're going to be here sharing your story both in, on a personal level uh, as far as your career goes. And then we'll talk a little bit about the film and just kind of how it came together. I mean, look, the quality of that film. I, I mean, I see I see a lot of that. Uh, uh, I see more than just the camera. 
is there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about the set uh the wardrobe everything that was going on there uh, so what we'll do is uh we'll start out uh, with tim uh just a little bit maybe you can uh Tell us a little bit more about yourself. I know you've been, you know, working in the industry for over 30, uh, 20 years, or over 30 credits, uh, and you have done uh, films that are uh, short form, and then this is a feature film as well. Uh, and we can right. talk a little bit about that, but just tell us a little bit more about, uh, because I know that sometime in your, in your life, you made a shift right uh in careers just so maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and um that uh just just sort of how you are what type of creator are you okay so i've i've always been fascinated with the films um when i was 13 i actually made a uh, a little film a eight millimeter super eight film that i did when i was 13. um so uh I've, i was always interested really interested in the special effects makeup actually in horror movies and uh mm -hmm. then and then when i got older um kind of like what you were talking about earlier about anybody can be anybody can be an actor like i always figured you had to be the blonde haired blue eyed guy on the beach type thing and uh, a friend of mine um actually more down by you um down by uh allentown area um bethlehem her son, her son was doing um, commercials and films and stuff, and and she told me she's like, you just got just do it. So I got headshots done, and that's kind of how it all started. So. Oh wow! Wow. So now, so when I, when did that start? Like, how how old were you now? You're 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 interested in films. You made a a short film when you were uh, younger. And what would be that age uh, when you uh, got that opportunity to say, you know what? Maybe I want to be I want to be doing this for 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 a living. Yeah, I mean it. Well, <laughs> not for a living, but it was well. <laughs> kind of you know kind of later later in years. Like I was in my forties when I finally just got headshots oh, wow. done. And, started doing that, it so. that's actually very inspiring that's very inspiring to to a lot out there that are definitely listening to this uh because we have a uh, quite a uh our audience uh ranges uh so what was it that when you were at that age and uh you were like okay what was your first um gig we would say like and then you kind of just went from there as far as acting i did a couple of um i was in a couple of films that never got finished <laughs> initially which happens a lot too at yeah, this right, uh, right. Yes. you know in the independent films and uh then i actually ended up um so i'm a dr i've been a drummer for over 30 years playing in wow. uh, rock bands on and off over the years and a uh, guy i met in um florida my band went down to florida and did like a long weekend of gigs and he's special effects makeup guy and he was doing a film soon so i ended up in that it's uh it's kind of a cult um horror movie a slasher movie called a hundred tears that was okay. i consider that's like the first the first movie i did that actually was something okay and i'm showing a little bit of uh, just clips of some of your acting some of uh the uh, the extensive demo reel that you have uh for uh one thing that i noticed right that uh while i was watching this is that you um you are good with uh with, with different accents. Uh, tell me a little bit about that because that's very hard for an actor. Yeah. So I did this one film where it's an action movie and I was uh, supposed to be a Scot a Scottish. And, uh, so I had, uh, so what I did was there was a, a guy I knew in Buffalo, New York that that's uh, from Scotland, an older gentleman that, that came to the States and he was, he's been acting. So what I did was I sent him the script and had him read my lines back, sent me a recording reading my lines back. So that's how I worked on the accent. Oh, wow. That's okay. Good idea. The, that's, a, that's a really good idea because then sometimes we, we get caught up in like, oh my goodness, like I have to do it in a different a different way. Uh, was there, other than that, was there anything that you did in your career as far as classes, workshops, anything that helped you uh, develop those skills as an actor? Um, I, I did take, um, it was like a six, six week workshop, um, in Rochester, New York. And then I had done a few other, a few other workshops. Um, those I think help a lot with like, 
because well one thing what i found out everybody everybody is always afraid they're not going to remember their lines like right. it doesn't matter like where you're at in your career that's everybody so that, that was kind of reassuring that when i found out that you know that's how everybody feels like no matter how long you do it or whatever um but it helped work on that and um performing in front of other people um that's just you know those are those are fears i feel everybody has yes and, and when you see it in uh you see it in someone else that they're they're trying to do this in the same career it, it really reassures you right that you're you're on the right path and that you you know you're just human you know like we're all human at the end of the of the day well that's very right, very good feel, uh no go right ahead no i feel that um it's one of those careers where if um you have to you have to have those fears otherwise you're not doing anything you're not doing yeah. anything right if, exactly if, if that's not yeah, the case fear, then fear can bring you down and then you're not really doing anything like you said so that's that's the first advice uh desiree you know how we are all about uh doing that so go right ahead uh desiree and uh, introduce uh jeff and uh we'll talk a little bit more about him yeah so jeff in your bio you said this is your ninth year that you got back into acting um and you have a, a lot of awards you have six awards three nominations um you act in the showdown of yesteryear so if you want to Talk to us about your journey and where you're from. Well, I'm actually from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and, and I did, I mean, I, I did acting as a youth uh, in uh, middle school, high school, uh, played around, did a couple MASH episodes, played Charlie Brown here or there, uh, did that kind of stuff. Then right out of high school, I went in the military for some years and uh, life, life just became life. Then uh, uh, I started reenacting at a place called Dogwood Pass, which is in southern Ohio, Beaver, Ohio, down kind of close to Portsmouth, the Ohio River area. And uh, uh, that's where I actually ended up meeting Tim and quite a few people. Um, I, I was down there one day and they was going to film a movie and asked if I wanted to be have a small part in it. It's like, why not? So I got that small part in it and got hooked again and... <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> love it, love it. I hear that a lot. I, I hear that a lot from people. They just get hooked on something. And you know what? Um, so tell us about that experience because a lot of times, you know, your first experience when you're, you know, becoming an actor, that can really shape your whole career as well or your whole path, uh, whether it's something that uh, you're going to pursue or maybe you don't like it. Uh, so what was it when you did that? Um, tell us about like the filmmakers, just kind of how you felt as far as like, that gave you that hook, right? Of just like, oh my goodness, now I want to do this. Yeah, you know, I think it's in life, as crazy as it is, I, I, I think we all want to portray or be something maybe we are not or would like to be or can be. And uh, I, I think that's what kind of did it for me. Uh, am I perfect in everything I do? No, but, 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 but I try to have a good time in everything I do. And I try to make it memorable and life in everything, you know, in front of the film, even on stage commercials, I've done a little bit of everything now. And uh, uh, yeah, just make it memorable, make it you, make it memorable. That's great. That's that's great advice, this Ray. I think uh, you know uh, I work with a lot of younger kids and a lot of young actors, uh, and you know that's the first thing is sometimes is their first experience uh, on a film set. So making it uh, comfortable, making it fun, uh, making it whether you're you know 10 years old, 80 years old, and yeah. just getting into the set. If you don't make it fun uh, for it, um, it it, yeah. it really does shape the way they're gonna they're gonna see this uh, as well. And it's um, like Tim said, we're all nervous. Exactly. We're all nervous. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's actually a good thing because Tim, you have now let's talk about your shift, right? Now you went from acting. Tell us a little bit more about your writing and then we'll talk a little bit about directing. Um, did did it help you that you were interested in acting first and then to get into the writing part of it? Um yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely, definitely as far as like going behind the camera, I feel it's, it's better to be an actor first to, uh, okay. 
to to real life, you know, to get to know how that the whole process works as far as filmmaking. I think that's what a lot of people don't understand initially is they don't understand the process. And uh, yeah. once once you get comfortable with that, then and I can see now why a lot of the bigger actors do that too. Then they end up being directors and writers, and mm -hmm. it's just and everybody always asks me, well, which which do I like better? And I, I I love them both. Like I love I love being behind the camera and and directing and just kind of um, producing and you know trying to figure out the outcome. So. Very, very like good. Well, that brings me, yeah, that's good because that brings me to The Door, okay? The Door was a short film that you wrote uh, and also directed. Uh, and then that is um, sort of what led to something else, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, was that your first or second short film? Uh, that was my was second it? short film. That was the my second, second right? one. Right. So, so tell me so, a little bit about that and just the concept itself that kind of brought so how that all came about, Jeff and I, Jeff and I acted in another movie that was shot at the same location. That was the yeah. time I was there, um, and I got to throw Jeff around. I was. You got to kill me. <laughs> I was. I was the bad guy. I got to throw Jeff around, and we got to be close friends because of that. I guess because you know why not become close friends with the guy who throws you around. But, uh, of course. So it made sense to me. <laughs> so when I came home, when I came home from from that shoot, um, I all, all I could think of was I need to figure out a way to do my own film, to go back there and shoot my own film. So I had come up with this idea, um, which actually I talked a couple of years before that with a friend of mine that I that I'd done some short films with locally here. Um, same it's the same kind of idea only it was going to be a horror film but i was like i'm i'm going to use that and uh make it into a western so i got oh, wow. back a hold of jeff and mm -hmm. everybody at uh, dogwood pass where we shot it and we uh made a long weekend and shot a short film yeah oh door. wow it's a beautiful so, experience. So, so you were also in the door uh jeff then yes that's, okay. Okay. Yes. So the why we're talking about the door is very uh, significant to this because this is what led you to do uh, showdowning yesteryear. Uh, yeah. So tell me a little bit about the buzz and just what people liked about that film mm -hmm. uh, that you did that led you into uh, making a feature film about it. So sort of like your proof of concept became right. your feature film. Right. So I entered it in a bunch of film festivals. Um, it did really well on the film festival circuit, won a bunch of yeah. awards. And everybody loved the, the concept and everybody kept telling me you need to make this a full feature film. So so I did. <laughs> Basically. Oh, wow. And, and, and with the full feature, I think we're up to like 21 uh, different awards now. Oh, right. wow. Wow. So now tell me about the process then from both of you. Now you have become friends. Now you've been, uh, uh, you know, an actor uh, on the door as well. Uh, and now you're going to try to get this made into a feature film. What was the process behind it? Uh, Jeff, were you part of that initially or after Tim sort of like went back, went on that? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I was probably kind of involved throughout the whole thing. Uh, Tim Tim had said that he was going to turn it over to Greg, and he asked me. He said, "Hey, do you want to go ahead and star in this as well?" And I'm like, "I, you know, if you're going to force me." <laughs> and, and, and just to give people a little bit of a background, uh, and I'm sorry, Desiree, I know I take over sometimes no, during this okay. conversation. No, I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> Because Greg is not here, but uh, hopefully uh, he's okay. But uh, we uh, want to talk about him just a little bit, even though he's not here, just because he is uh, sort of a key member. Well, he's not sort of. He is a key member in this production. Yeah. Uh, well, he has had uh, over you know 40 years as an independent filmmaker. Uh, and he also just produced a lot of horror films uh, and a lot of other films. Yeah. Uh, so you came to him because he had... A experience with the uh, producing part or the directing uh, kind of how did you go around that well I know <clears throat> I know he's really well known for his, his script right he's actually an author as well um, okay. he was an author of a lot of uh, horror 
four books and won awards from that as well. Um, so, and some of them, some of his films are actually based on his books. Um, so, and Greg, Greg had talked to me probably like six or seven years ago about he had an idea for a Western and, uh, but it never got made. We never got funding. So then this, so, uh, then this movie, you had already done this. Um, and now we're coming to this, to this film. Uh, did you sort of then took on another role? Uh, and now rather than directing, now you have a different director, uh, and you also right. have a different writer. Um, how was that process? Right. Well, Aaron, who directed it, he, he helped out. He, she, he actually shot um, Showdown yesteryear, and he was the DP on the door as well. He helped out a lot right. with the door. Um, it was kind of, actually kind of, I guess we both kind of directed that. Um, but So I hired him strictly for that, for this, and then uh, got a hold of Greg. And Greg runs a film festival in Buffalo, New York. So um, Greg had seen it, seen the door, and uh, he thought it was a good idea. So we met had a couple of meetings, met up with coffee and and discussed like uh what I wanted in the film and so I we, even we went to did. Dogwood Pass and took a bunch of pictures to give right. Greg kind of a baseline of what he was looking at and what he would be working with. <clears throat> uh, right. So, so tell so, me no. a little bit about that then. Right. I had I just I had, Jeff, I had Jeff take photos of the different buildings and things so Greg Greg could, um, you know, knew what he was working with as far as the script, the layout. And how long did that did that process take? Then from script, like you have the concept, you have a proof of concept, and then to write that script, uh, what was the, the 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 process there? Actually, it wasn't that long. I think. No. I think it was maybe a couple of months. Um, Greg Sounds and I went right, back yeah. and forth. Okay where we got the final script oh wow wow and now okay so now we're in production uh we were just talking about that uh you're doing uh this this film how long did it take you from uh beginning to end to finish the whole film uh and yeah. then we can maybe jeff you can talk a little bit about just kind of how you were describing the actual uh set and slash town uh for this that made the film look so unique uh to the western Incredible, yeah so shooting, shooting wise, we shot it in 18 days, consecutive days, no days off, yes. um, long 12 hour to 16, 17 hour days. Um, yeah. There was a few days, there was a few um, shorter days, um, the modern day stuff part of it um, were like our easy days. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> Wow, that, that that's really cool. So the the town itself, uh, the set itself, uh, is uh, as you were telling me, Jeff, is a town, correct? Uh, it's a it, it, yeah, it's called Dogwood Pass. It's in Beaver, Ohio, uh, it, and they hold they have shows dur during the summer months, and then they when they close it down, they open it up for Halloween and have a scare. Then they open it up for Christmas and. Do all that kind of stuff but it's all western based um actually i was reenacting down there for uh some time i was playing even doc holiday for a while oh, oh wow wow so, uh, so and, and i even went as far to even learn his latin so we we had a lot of fun and uh, uh, some of the stuff i did down there too i was teaching some of the uh, horses to be shot off of with guns uh because we did that uh, so uh, there was a lot of equestrian stuff going on as well. Wow. Look at look at just the, uh, I see, uh, as I'm watching this, uh, I just see the set and I see uh, it, that is a, just so important, especially because you're making a, a Western film and you're also trying to be a, a little bit of historically accurate. Right. Um, yep. So what, um, that, that, that definitely helped. Uh, or like so you had like full range of the place when you were there. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. The the owner Mike Montgomery was super like he he did whatever we we needed or wanted. Um, oh, wow. He was always there to help out. 
he actually plays the the ranch owner in the movie. That's yeah. the the gentleman who owns Dogwood Pass. Oh wow! Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the scenes within the movie is with myself and him. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, I'm laying on a couch, and that uh, that that particular scene there always did touch me. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to this real quick. Uh, well, Desiree, I think Desiree had a question. Uh, I just I just like this uh, right here. Hold on. It's, um, Was I rolling down the hill? Uh, <laughs> with that shotgun. That's right my there. favorite part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, the gun. Yeah. The yes. only thing gun. about that gun is. Yeah. You've seen me rolling down the hill, and I'm trying right. not to exaggerate, mm -hmm. but if I didn't roll down that hill five times, it was ten times. Oh, wow. Look at that. After I got done with that, I get up to the top of the hill. They're like, okay, Jeff, now we're going to start slinging the gun around. I'm like, really? <laughs> Let's do it again, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Let, let me. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. That's a good Jeff's stat. favorite words. Okay. One more time. One more time. Oh, yeah, that was perfect, but do it again. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, it even come down to where I, uh, uh, if you watch the film, you'll see me come off a horse a time or two. Uh, I was caught once. <laughs> you did? Oh, wow. I was caught once. <laughs> so you have to have good insurance for that, right? Like, oh, yeah. like, let's, let's just tell those filmmakers that, you know, you can't just be making a film and rolling down the hill <laughs> without insurance. You know, it, it's kind of like I was saying earlier. I, I honestly believe in my heart of hearts. Everybody that touched that film put their heart into it, including myself and Tim and everybody involved with it. I, I believe the animals even did. <laughs> It, it just it, to me it shows yes and and, and i go ahead this way, i'm sorry and then i'll, I'll no, go okay. ahead. um with the whole western um if undertaking like a feature film is a feat in of itself so with it going yeah. to be like a period piece essentially like how did you prepare of like setting up the set and getting kind of accurate with like costumes and things like that and also like you're using real horses it looks like so how did that yeah. work as well we're, we're actually using real horses all the weapons you see are real weapons uh mike montgomery is actually an armorist and actually uh teaches uh, uh, uh concealed carry in the state of ohio so all that plays into effect which helps mm -hmm. Uh, and most, not everybody, but most everybody in the film are actually uh, uh, characters at Dogwood Pass during the season. So everybody having their costumes and all that kind of stuff kind of came together that way. Uh, one thing I know Tim and I kept talking about, we wanted to make sure that, that people appeared to be dirty. Because, yes. I mean, you would have been. So we tried to keep the dirt upon us as much as we could. Very, very good. And I mean, it, it is, uh, uh, as far as the plot of, of, of the film, uh, without giving everything away, of course, uh, it, 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 um, it reminds me of my favorite, favorite film, of course, the third part of Back to the Future. Right. And I love it because it's Western. I, and I did see a little bit of um, just some hints of, of, of the reference and, and it just made me happy. Right. <laughs> when I saw that, what um, was there a little bit of that, maybe that influence uh, in other films that maybe you have seen that had helped with crafting the story? Um, well, I know Greg's a big, big Western guy, like obviously Marion. Um, her name actually, you know, came from John. That was John Wayne's real name. Right. Um, McMurtry yeah. is. Um, I'm I'm not that up on it, but uh, author I think he wrote. Did he write Lonesome Dove or something? He wrote some big book. Oh wow! Well-known Western book. His name was McMurtry. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> there's that, and then um, so the one reference at the at the bar, at the saloon at the bar, um, where he he asked for a captain and coat. That's kind of where I got that idea from. Was Back to the Future. That's oh great because that was. <laughs> That was that was in the short as well um so yeah that was a lot of those things were influences that, 
That's very nice. So, so that brings me to uh, just what kind of films do you like to watch? Uh, not just for reference, just in general for, that's a question for both of you, just kind of what are your uh, favorite films? Like, uh, is there a particular genre that you like? I personally mm. like all genres. I like, I like a meaning. I, I, I like a story. Uh, I, I try to, I, I don't want to get lost, but I like a story. I like a meaning, um, no matter whether it's Western or, or, or modern day or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I just, I like a story. I, I even like true based stories as well. And, and what I like about this, uh, it, it has heart as well. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just, uh, you know, he's not just running around uh, in the, you know, in the past, there's something to it. Uh, and it's, you know, when people watch it, and I'm going to put it right here, uh, because the best way to watch right now uh, is uh, we have it on um, Amazon Prime and Voodoo. Uh, can you tell uh, just the audience just a little bit more about that, how they can find it? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, just go on Amazon and search Showdown in Yesteryear. Um, it should come up. You write Showdown in, it should it should start popping up. Voodoo as well. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll be on Tubi later this year, but we'll see. I'm not. I'm don't have any information on that yet. And I do have okay. DVDs for sale. So. Right. Um, oh nice nice so that's that's a good thing for the audience because we have to support our filmmakers right uh so make sure you go on amazon prime and you check it out i believe it's only 2.99 i mean come on you know you waste more on coffee uh so (laughs) that would be a great thing to do uh and also how would they find uh like if uh someone wanted a dvd um i know we have your uh, social um social media but is there anything in particular they have to do um, so if you go on the web or if you go on the Facebook page for showdown or my page, um, there's links to buying it. Um, there's links on mine as well. Okay. Oh, great. Or, or if they just private message me, I can, I can get, get them one as well. So I, I can, I can say this about showdown in yesteryear and even the door and all this, you know, showdown in yesteryear, it, it is a true journey. And I do believe in my heart of hearts that it's a journey. It was definitely a journey of a lifetime. And I honestly believe that there's a little Daryl Dumwoody in all of us. <laughs> I do believe oh, that. Wow. That's good. And, 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 I, and I love it. And, you know, you know what I love about you guys is you're wearing your hat. You know, you really are wearing, <laughs> wearing the film. You know, you didn't forget about your hat. You know, like in Back to the Future. So oh, no. uh, I'm it's glad you right. have it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that brings us a little bit to the uh, and if there's anyone that have uh, that is watching that has any questions or anything uh, that you want to tell our filmmakers, this is the time uh, just to uh, you know sort of uh, engage. Um, and again. I'm going to let uh, Desiree uh, just uh, tell us more like about the last question that we always ask uh, all of our filmmakers or all of our creatives, because that, um, uh, again, we want to promote filmmaking, but we most of all, we want to promote engagement with filmmakers, with creatives, uh, just so everybody knows that we're all kind of one, we're all doing the same thing, just in different, you know, different places, different times, and everybody is in a different uh, journey. Uh, so yeah, go yeah. right ahead, Desiree. Hey, it's never too late. Never. <laughs> right. but I don't think exactly. you said what your favorite films are. <laughs> the, what was that? What was the question? Sorry. I don't think Tim said what his favorite films are that oh. he likes to watch. So. Oh, that's true. <laughs> um, I like just about everything, too. Um, you know, something that's uh, good, you know, just made well. Um, what drives me nuts about a lot of independent films is bad audio. Like, that just, yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't think people spend enough time on that. They, they spend more time on how it looks rather than, than having decent audio. Um, and like Jeff said, another thing that drives me nuts watching Westerns is they come out and their clothes, they look like they were just pressed yesterday or something, you know, I mean, come on, we're talking the old West. The white, yeah. it was obviously shiny white clothes, and you know, so um, 
but no, I I like I like most any kind of films. The Crow was one of my favorite films back in the yeah. '90s. Um, it still is one of my favorites. Um, um, yeah, all the old John Wayne movies. Um, Have you ever seen stuff. McClintock? Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. <laughs> Oh, well, that's fine. A couple hundred. No, well, that's good. <laughs> and that makes sense because, like you said, you know, uh, all the little details that uh, a lot of times we put in just on the visuals, uh, but, uh, you know, listening to it or the little things that, you know, like if they have something in their clothes, whether it's historical or not, uh, just an idea of that, you know, uh, it, it makes the world that you're trying to tell a little bit more believable because uh, right. we all know we're right. watching a, a film. But if you know you can forget a little bit about the actual world that's happening around you while you're watching, uh, that means those filmmakers uh, did a did a really really good job. You know? Yeah, yeah, like the Starbucks coffee in Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, there you go. I'm so mad about that. <laughs> but uh, all right, that's right. Bring it, bring it, uh, bring it back home, and and, and so, let's go from there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the final question we usually ask our guests is, what's the best advice? you can give to aspiring filmmakers? Actors, creatives, whoever, whatever, however you want to take this. You know, maybe something you didn't know when you were younger that you could have done different. D despite the disappointments, despite the turndowns, don't stop. Follow your right. dream. Follow your dream. Do it. No matter what everybody's saying around you, continue. You will find your way. The journey will be worth it. Right. Very good. <clears throat> I do have a good a good point for um, catering. When I did this film, what I did it was yeah. a suggestion of a friend. Um, I used uh, VFW to uh, to cater to cater for the movie. Saved me a lot of money. Um, oh, oh. Anybody in the yeah. cast or crew that's a vet, use the you know use the VFW. Yep, use Jeff it. and I are both vets. But uh, wow, yeah, that was in the food was really good. Like I have no complaints. No. And you're supporting too. That's that's good. That that is not right. something that uh you know that's a good tip to to have uh, especially for everyone around here. I know we have a couple of uh you know uh, veterans uh, that are filmmakers in 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 the NEPA film uh, crew. So uh, it's it's very nice to see that as well. Yeah, right. very very mm -hmm. good. But uh, but you have to give us something that as well to inspire. You know, like something that maybe you you could have told yourself and be like, you know, maybe I would have changed this, or maybe I didn't need to change this, and I was so right for the for this time. So, something. Let's see. Just work work through it. Like I said, you know, everybody's everybody's scared. If if you're not scared, then you're not doing something right. So I agree. Work through it. That's true. Very good. Very and, very and that good. Goes with film or stage or anything. Yeah. Just life. You gotta do it. Just gotta do it. it. <laughs> very, very good. Well, listen, no. uh, gentlemen. Thank you so much for real. This. Thank you so much for coming oh, today yeah. and uh, spending for us as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, spending and even in talking, uh, you know, through uh, Scranton talks. Um, and just uh, the idea of that is never too late. And also, it's never too late to shift careers. It's oh, never no. too late to try something new. Uh, and it just uh, really reassures a lot of filmmakers, including myself, that you know we're on the right path. Everybody has their own uh, way. Uh, you just gotta keep keep on doing it. Uh, so I'm gonna let Desiree close the program, uh, and then we're gonna show the trailer at the end um, as well. Um, don't leave the live stream, uh, gentlemen, uh, just so we can say our proper goodbyes once we uh, finish the show. Go ahead, Desiree. Yes, and we want to thank everyone so much for joining us tonight for our Scran Talks with Tim and Jeff. Um, we always have wonderful events coming up, so be sure to follow us on the Independent Film Creative Hub on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date with what we're doing. Um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well to see any of our previous talks like this one if you can't make our live streams. Um, they always live on there, and we also have a podcast where we take the audio from our talks and put them on a podcast so you can listen to them whenever you would like. So feel, so feel free to message us if you would like to be on the show. Um, we would love to have you and share your journeys and talk about your projects. Um, the Independent Film Creative Hub is here for you. It's here to help filmmakers and creatives reach their potential and becoming successful creative artists. And to check out our website, artcreativehub.com. 
and join our directory. It's free to sign up. And I think that covers everything. I think that does. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone out there. Uh, say thank you to our filmmakers. And we're going to show that trailer uh, one more time. Uh, so you guys can make sure that uh, since you I know everyone's on Facebook right now. So you got to just go and like the page uh, and maybe buy a DVD or go uh, on Amazon Prime or Vudu and start uh, watching the film. Yeah. Uh, so thank you guys uh, again for uh, coming here. Uh, you have a good night. Thanks, everybody. All right, thank you. Thank you. Stranger, what can I get for you? I'd like to have a Captain and a Coke. A, a what? That's good, brother. <laughs> you guys do go all out here. Thank you. <laughs> Just saw a man get killed. This is real. Wait till you hear this, Sheriff. Go on and tell him. I woke up this morning in the year 2022. I found a door. I fell through it, it brought me here. So I've been running around looking for it so I can find my way back home. I know a lot of powerful people. I can be a good friend to you. Or I can rain down upon you all the horrors of hell. And I promise you, you will regret it. Welcome to Dogwood Pass. It's a hard life, Mr. Wayne. My husband was the only man who stood up to him. The beast shot him in cold blood. What you doing with that flyer? I can be your deputy. You know how to shoot them sidearms you were? Hell no. You damn well better learn. It's Future Boy! Jack Duck, I have whiskey in the future. Does it glow in the dark? It's your last chance to go back. When I said I'd do it, I meant it. How do you think this ends, Dobbs? I found something. Called it a place. Called it a time.